und Riech und der Ehre, es war sich der noch angesäche. So bist du sie aller Ehre, was ist Wundes hier geschehe? This is The New Right, a podcast for the lost arts, reclaiming the literary holy land from the heathen. This is Matt Pegas, um, and I'm here uh, alone today. Uh, Dan Baltic couldn't make it, but I'm here with a special guest. Our, uh, by the way, I was going to ask you this before we started recording, but now now here we go. Uh, you pronounce your last name Hagopian? Yeah. Um, you know, Armenian Armenia is a, you know, a Christian country, so... It's like it's like biblical, you know. It's just it's really just Jacobson, but it's gotcha. uh, interesting. Hagopian, yeah, Hagopian. So Ara Hagopian. Many of you know him from Twitter. Um, oh. <laughs> go on, go on. <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess so. Maybe. Yeah, no, we have a bunch of like mutual followers and kind of in the same same orbit. Um, you um, label yourself a writer, a polemicist, and a podcaster. I've listened uh, to your podcast, the Black Mold podcast. You were calling it. Yeah, well, the thing, it just kind of, it kind of fizzled out. You know, I, I had a friend who was supposed to do it with me, but he decided not to. And it was very hard to kind of fill time by yourself, you know. Um, yeah. So they just kind of fizzled out, unfortunately. So you yeah. really don't need to code it or anything. All right. Well, I will say that I, I think it's behind a paywall now, but I did enjoy the few episodes I've heard. Um, you know, I, I just kind of view you as a general creator. You you write, you, you've done some podcasting. Obviously, you're doing a podcast now. Um, yeah. and you write good tweets and yeah, I do think a lot of people oh. probably know you from, from Twitter, but also you are a MFA graduate student in creative writing at the university of Florida in Gainesville. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. and you were in your last semester now. Yeah. Yep. Um, so how, tell me a little bit about, um, kind of how, how you decided to, to pursue that and like what your general experience has been like getting an MFA in creative writing? Um, I don't know. Can I just go right into my thesis? Uh, I have Absolutely. stuff to say about my yeah. thesis. No, yeah. If you, you can say whatever you want. We're a fast and loose podcast here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, well, that's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I defended my thesis a little while ago, and I was really disappointed with uh, how it went. Um, you know, as you know, my committee was, uh, you know, People I do respect, they're, you know, I mean, you can look them up. It's, you know, my committee chair was Camille, C-A-M-I-L-L-E, Camille Bordas. You know, she writes mm-hmm. to The New Yorker. Uh, and, you know, Uam Akban, who is, uh, you know, African writer, who's been on Oprah and everything. And and then Angie Malenko, uh, who is, you know, a, a poet, uh, mm-hmm. somewhat celebrated yeah. poet. So, you know, these are all people I kind of, you know, I respect, you know, I've read their work. I think it's good, but um, yeah, I don't know. I, I wrote a kind of, I, I feel like I, I took some risks and I was sort of summarily, uh, you know, kind of whipped back in line. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, so like, first of all, I think, I think the internet, I, cause I wrote about the internet, you know, I, yeah. it's, yeah. uh, it's sort of like notes from underground, but, mm-hmm. but the internet. But, that sounds but, great, know, honestly. Guys, yeah, but the yeah. guy's the internet, you know. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and uh, yeah, and, and and I think it's you know the internet's a really important part of the human experience now, and uh, yeah. I yeah. I think it's worth it's worth thinking about and writing about. But there's this this kind of pushback against that. There's this idea that it's like you know it's not real, that it's not uh you know legitimate, that it's just kind of uh you know uh. Again, it's not legitimate. Yeah, it's like a extension upon reality rather than reality itself. 
Yeah. And I just, I can't, you know, I can't subscribe to that. I think it's, you know, um, I think it's important, but then, you know, uh, Camille, uh, my thesis chair said, said something like, Oh, uh, you know, uh, th th there's 3 billion people that don't have the internet, which I thought was just a weird standard to apply. Cause those, Three billion people have nothing to do with what she writes about either. You know, you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, no, completely. Um, and then, uh, and I tried to kind of be like, oh well, you know, especially the younger generation. You know, the, you know, the tw people are around, you know, twenty years old or whatever. They put a lot of themselves into the internet. Yeah. They, uh, you know, they, <laughs> it, you know, that it's really not like you, the idea. Of, like you write a story where you know you go to a place. And you know you you do it you take an action and it has consequences. Um, yeah, that's many, kind like, of cool that's on, not man. really how the world works anymore. You know, it's a good mean? point. Like, a, lot yeah. people, a lot of people live on the internet. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I said, know. You know, oh, yeah. I said, oh, you know, this is this is especially true with twenty year olds. And then Um said something like, "the the world isn't just twenty year olds." Which again, I thought was really weird. It is weird. Like, why? Why do you have to be writing to encapsulate the whole world? Anyway, yeah. like, what's this standard that everything must be totally universal? Yeah, uh, I mean, or, you know, not... yeah, it's yeah, it's like a, it's very strange. Um, it's almost like I wonder if that criticism <clears throat> is like masking some other criticism or so. I mean, not. To, I don't want to get too polemical, although you do call yourself a polemicist, right, in your Twitter handle. But uh, why can't you get, wait, why not? Wait, wait, okay, well, I, I, I'm just being um, coy, I guess. But no, like I, I, I don't want to be too like on the on the nose political because I try to you know promote a more general understanding of these kinds of things without like sounding like I'm on Fox News or something. But um, you know, there there is that I do think there is that element to enforcing sort of I don't even know if politically correct is the word, um, but some kind of I, I suppose liberal would definitely be the word standard onto all writing, um, which is something that you know I bumped I bumped up against in undergrad and and uh, and still now. Uh, I do think it's this fundamentally misguided notion that art should not be personal, that you're not taking a particular perspective, warts and all. I mean, that's definitely my understanding of. Um, I mean, of, of, of life, of, of any kind of writing, but especially creative writing uh, is, you know, leaning into your perspective. And like, they, it's good to be open to other perspectives and other people that may exist in the world and sensitive to them. But the idea that you should write something that um, somehow is, is for everyone or encapsulates all of humanity um, is very foreign to me, which it, I mean, I don't know if I'm saying, I don't know if, that's totally what um, you know, the person on your thesis board was saying, but it's kind of what it sounds like. I mean, do, do you think so? Yeah. And I mean, I think that the idea of like, you know, polemics and stuff, it's a good thing to bring up because my, you know, it, it was a very polemical word, like, you know, and I tried to, I tried to kind of establish it as like, you know, this character was speaking mm -hmm. and it was like kind of their manifesto and, 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 yeah. you know, it's, it's a character study, but it's also, I mean, the ideas are in there. It's polemical, you, you might say. And um, yeah, no, you, you mentioned you were going to incorporate elements of, of polemic into it, um, which yeah. I think is cool. Yeah. And they just, they're, they're really not, because, you know, the prevailing attitude now is like, you know, it's like, uh, you know, art should raise questions. It shouldn't give answers. You know, you can't, you can't talk at your reader. You need to like, you know, and uh, I've read that the CIA kind of created that. <laughs> Really, um, you know, like they created the whole Iowa, you know, slash MFA like workshop culture, like you know, post. Oh, you're gonna have to it's, tell um, me more about this. That's fascinating. <laughs> well, you know, because because yeah. what it does is it removes it, it kind of it removes some political salience from literature and art. You know, it's a uh, jeez, yeah. Uh, like you know, so, you know, like you know, Brecht wrote yeah. like, and he his stuff was very much like, oh, well, this is why you should, you know this is why you should be a communist. You know, it was very, uh, it had a moral, you know, there's yeah. a moral of the story. Um, and, and under that, you know, under the new paradigm, like someone like Brecht would be, you know, substandard. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. It's, I mean, the, the, again, the, the kind of more Fox news polemical thing is like, Oh, he'd be canceled. I don't think Brecht would be canceled. I think he'd be uh, dismissed outright. Like, what are you doing? Like he would right. be dismissed on like a structural like the very conceit of what he was doing would be would be um, dismissed as 
uh, patriarchal, not patriarchal. Um, what, what's the word I'm looking for? Pretentious. That's a yeah. probably, a, probably a Freudian <laughs> slip there of some kind. Um, but yeah, pretend maybe patriarchal, pretentious, um, uh, elitist, all these things. It would probably be, you know, dismissed outright. Um, and I, it kind of sounds like no, I don't want to overstay. I don't know. I mean, I hope I hope that the people on your thesis board aren't being that level of dismissive. But it sounds like they are kind of dismissive oh, yeah, in such a pretty, way. Yeah, yeah, they were they were they were pretty dismissive. Um, Damn, because uh, you know. I essentially, I, I really, I got called like a megalomaniac and an armchair philosopher, which like, what else is a novelist besides a, you know, a megalomaniac and an armchair, and an philosopher. armchair philosopher? I, I you know agree I mean? entirely. <laughs> I mean, I've, thankfully, I've never been in a, in a room full of uh, thesis advisors who have accused me of such, but, uh, you know, I've. I, 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 I'm not going to say that I've been accused of being a megalom- uh, megalomaniacal and an armchair philosopher so much as I, I am one. At least when I'm writing, at least when I'm podcasting right. sometimes. Uh, it's not like a bad thing to to be. Um, obviously, megalomania can can be bad for reasons that are that are obvious. but but certainly philosophizing and being a big picture thinker and really addressing things um that are in the big picture. I mean, I remember in my undergraduate creative writing classes, I specifically at the time, I was like, okay, maybe this is true. Uh, now I would probably push back on it more. I remember a line in some some, I don't remember what it's called. It was like a Norton published, like major creative writing, big, thick, yellow textbook. Maybe you even know the one. Yeah, yeah. Um, Because if you, well, we're going to get into how we actually share the same undergrad experience later. But if you took, I assume you probably took creative writing at Cornell. And if you were in there. Yeah. yeah. So you probably had that Norton book as well. And I remember that was, maybe that's the, uh, again, uh, we'll have to talk more, more or you'll have to tell me more after about the, the CIA element. But But definitely that was like the textbook of, um think small uh make a modest point um and i specifically remember um you know you'll be modest with your work make a, a very make small points don't i i remember the line like if, you, if you're into big picture thinking you'd be better suited to a field like sociology or philosophy which um you know maybe there's a point there to be taken um yeah, right. I, I i have probably been a big picture thinker to a fault and i was a philosophy major as well so like it's always been kind of kind of doing both things at once trying like both creative writing and philosophy um but uh what was i going to say um they, 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 it's a it's i think it's a good thing for a writer to remember to kind of remain rooted but at the same time like if what if what inspires you as a person is philosophical sociological matters like of course you're going to write about them and when you were tweeting about your thesis the other week i think i responded as much like i have done a similar thing i'm not in an mfa program so i'm uh, for better or worse, uh, outside the realm of um, criticism, so to speak, I'm not. I don't have people who are um, criticizing my work on any kind of constant basis. Um, but uh, at the same time, I don't have people criticizing my work uh, in terms of it being too philosophical. Um, so I, I don't know how this lands on readers or not. Uh, people who've read my work can tell me. Um, but I definitely mix in. I don't even like to call it philosophy, but you know, criticism, shall we say, with fiction um and you know subvert a little bit sometimes like my the novel i wrote dragon day um kind of involves a, a parodic critical theory element that is also like sort of serious at the same time and and the r- work i'm writing, writing next kind of involves things where it's like it's, it's like auto fiction which i think you described your thesis also as basically auto fiction um yeah, where right. it's like very close to who i actually am but then there's also these like analytical yeah polemics uh against the world um but it's all i i there's this it, it it's a it's a combination of fiction and polemic I, it's what i do as well it's what i think a lot of people do um a writer like delicious tacos i think even to a certain extent um as you said we're all online uh in the case of many people listening to this podcast and we're all on twitter we're all engaging with polemics all the time it's like a part of our daily reality the 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 reality of like going out and having a cause and effect type story happen to you yeah it is a little dated as you said we we are kind of glued to our screens all the time so stories happen intertwining with polemics and the way we present ourselves online i don't know does any of that resonate with with your work exactly yeah and i mean like where you said um uh you know, if if you have a major, if you have a bit, a large scale point to make, you should be in sociology or philosophy. You know, 
which is basically saying like, you know, if you have anything important to say, you should put it in an academic academic journal where no one's going to read it. <laughs> it's, I mean? it's exactly what it's saying. And um, the other copy I added to that, so I, and I'm not, I'm not trying to, again, not trying to be too polemical on this point, um, but I was also a philosophy major and I, you know, analytical philosophy departments in the United States, um, they, they actually tell you the same thing there. Like not to make a big point, make a modest point, make a modest like footnote on what someone else wrote. Um, there's kind of a similar emphasis where people, and perhaps for good reason. Obviously, some people go off the rails and say say wild stuff that's not grounded. Um, so, I, so I don't think I'm not like I don't think it's only. <laughs> I don't think it's just all a CIA CIA ploy. Um, but I but there is a strong emphasis. I think in academic culture in general, and including included in MFA programs um to just really dissuade people from from making bigger statements um which is yeah yeah right i mean you know because there if there's a you know this whole there's the body of literature where that's not allowed to make uh you know that that's supposed to raise questions rather than give answers uh so to speak and then there's academic journals that you know have become just you know basically unreadable yeah and, uh, yeah there needs to be something in, in the middle, you know what I mean? Uh, and, and, you know, like, you know, Tom common sense by Thomas Paine, you, you know, that it's a, uh, it was a, a you know, a pamphlet. Yeah, basically. exactly. Like, yeah. Like yeah. a polemic pamphlet. Like we don't really have those anymore. It, it There's, you know, it's become, it's become so, uh, you know, verboten that like you, you, you basically thought like, oh, if you, if you write something like that, you're going to shoot up, shoot up a school. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, and that's, I don't think that's good, you know, because, like, uh, you know, the, the mm -hmm. you know, Karl Marx wrote a manifesto, and that, yeah. you know, that, that had an impact, like, that changed the world. Are we get, are we just resigned to the fact that that's never going to happen again? Yeah. In human I, yeah. You know what I mean? Well, if it is going to happen, uh, this is almost a cringy thing to say, but if it is going to happen, it's going to be on Substack or, or maybe even, even, even somewhere more um, obscure than Substack. So I do think this space does exist, you know, and, and it's online and not that, not that it's perfect there either. Um, there's still different kinds of censorship. There's still, you know, who gets boosted, who doesn't. But I, I think thankfully there is kind of a, an interesting middle ground between um, sort of academic culture and like, normie culture for lack of a better word and I, I think it's kind of happening on twitter and on Substack. um i mean I, I i am i too optimistic i don't know but i i assume i assume this is kind of what brings what has brought you to to twitter is that a is that a fair assessment yeah exactly so like yeah because i think you're what you're touching on is like there's this you know and chomsky talks about this too where you know that the, the academia has become incredibly insular it's not even really concerned with uh you know getting any kind of message out to the to the larger population you know it's uh like you know with philosophy it's like oh don't you know you can't ever restate something that may have been said before that's a cardinal sin so just try to like find some little kind of footnote and make yeah. some little yeah. kind of like little kind of in incremental progress or no like if you can restate an idea but put it in a way that is, you know, uh, compelling to people now, uh, you know, you, you might not be, you know, be, might not be a hundred percent original quote unquote, but you, you know, if you can get it out to the people and, you know, ideas need to be pushed and pushed, you know what I mean? Like people yeah. need to be reminded more than they need to be instructed. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, so, uh, when I was doing my thesis defense, uh, I, I was talking, you know, to, Angie Malenko, and she said something like, oh, well, if I wrote a treatise like this, I would be citing a bunch of people. Yeah, I hate you know, that. I'd I be, hate that. I'd be yeah. citing Roca, I'd be citing, you know, whoever. And I thought, you know, there's something very insidious going on there because it's like, oh, if you're not from a certain background, if you don't have a certain kind of training, like you can't really have an opinion. No, and it's it's such arcane training, too, when you get into like um, philosophy or like critical theory stuff. And you're expected yeah. to be able to cite all these people. It's ridiculous. And I would also add to that, the uh, the internet element is, is important. I mean, the world and the communication and language and everything. I don't know, maybe every generation feels this way about itself, but I really think there's something about the internet, which is a fundamental aeonic shift in human consciousness. Um, that, you know, all these writers that she would have you cite, um, 
were writing before the internet. So I, I do think there's this like, right. not that it's not important to cite writers from the past, that's not what we're talking about, but like, like in, I think in a very real sense, um, things have changed so much that like we do need to look at everything from a fresh perspective. Um, if you want to bring in uh, an older thinkers, great. I mean, you know, I, I bring someone like Nietzsche into everything that I write, everything I do, but you know, there's still, there's definitely still important ones, but things have changed so much that I think that it is, uh, it should be, um, you know, the, 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 the negative side of it is how chaotic everything is. The positive side is that it's a, a I think a blank canvas to, to kind of re, um, re-engage right. with some of these problems. Um, if, if you'll tell me, I'm curious to hear a little more about your thesis and like what, um, how long is it? What a, what kind of narrative it is? You don't have to say much. Well, and I'm also curious if you're going to try and publish it elsewhere. But well, can I just keep can I keep work? Um, can I keep working up to it a little bit? Uh, yeah, yeah, um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So yeah, and I agree. And like, I love Roka. And I love my like all my favorite writer, like Melville's my favorite writer. And you yeah. know, uh, and really Dickinson's my favorite poet. And you know, of course, they still have great things to offer us. You know, like I have a Roka quote tattooed on my back, <laughs> you know, but <laughs> nice. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I totally agree. And I, I think where you said something like, oh, well, maybe every generation feels this way about itself. And to a certain extent, that's true. But I think it is possible for a situation to be unique. <laughs> you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, definitely. Um, definitely. And we are in a unique uh, uh, spot. Um, you know, I think this is one of my tweets, I think, where, where uh, it's something like, Oh, I, I'm worried about the nuclear apocalypse. I'm really worried about that. I'm worried that if we don't do something, the world will end. <laughs> and, yeah. uh, and, you know, that's the first part of the dialogue. And the second part of the dialogue is like, oh, yeah, that's what they said about, like, not sacrificing a goat to Zeus. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? And yeah. does that make sense? Or um... No, um, tying into the every generation kind of has that sense about right. itself. But, but I'm saying is, yeah. What I'm trying to say is, like, you know, there's these are defaults like oh every generation felt this way but like no we are in unique you know we are fundamentally different from all the people that came before us we you know the internet is fundamentally altered human you know uh the human experience i think you know so I mean? yeah definitely definitely i don't think we're being i don't think it's you know i don't think it's wrong to say that or like self-absorbed no. or myopic no i don't i don't think so either i don't think so at all i mean increasingly that's like a major topic that i'm trying to delve in on this podcast you know um, not so much politics, but kind of just delving into the reality of life on the internet, uh, warts and all, and all of its, uh, with all of its flaws. I mean, what is, uh, what is your take on the, this is too big of a question, but what is your take on it? Are you kind of optimistic about the potentials or, or very pessimistic or somewhere in between? Um, I say, oh, let me say one more thing first. Yeah, the, totally. Yeah. So, so after my thesis defense, my, you know, my, committee chair committee board us who kind of stayed after and we talked and uh you know I, i'm sort of recalcitrant by nature and uh i i, I was felt like i was being condescended to um oh, sure. yeah yeah and uh and that really like that's my number one thing that i don't like you know uh like i had uh i was trying to talk about hunter s thompson mm -hmm. and i was like oh you know hunter s thompson he wrote in like a really strong first person and he made he had the courage to like make these pronouncements about politics in the 60s yeah and and, and Jim Linko said something like oh well i mean hunter s thompson had an editor he had to like you know he had to filter himself through his and i'm like yeah i know he had an editor you know i'm not stupid yeah <laughs> i'm not yeah. an idiot and yeah. then like uam akran you know is this nigerian guy who's like you know this really nice guy but he started speaking to me in like proverbs <laughs> so he was like <laughs> Like are you talking about polemic stuff, and he was like, "Oh, how do you get a child to take a malaria pill? Like you put it in a piece of cake." And I'm like, "Oh, thank you for that. Like, <laughs> thank you." <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. But anyway, so then, yeah. Um, I mean, I think there's something I, generational, you know. There's just a lack well, of yeah. And then yeah, and then so I said after with Kimi Boras, and she said something like, "Oh, like what did you think? You know, we were all going to say it was just perfect." And I was just really hurt that she would think that of me because I'm not that I'm really not that person. Like, yeah, I'm sure it was I'm sure it was deeply flawed. You know, I don't think I wrote the best thing ever. I'm sure it was flawed. But, uh, you know, like I tried to include some narrative elements to balance out the, you know, polemic stuff. But and maybe I needed more of that. But they really did not meet me halfway at all. And yeah. uh, I was just, it really bummed me out. No, I'm um, sorry to hear it. Yeah. And I was, you know, 
I was just really hurt that she would say that, like think that of me. And then I tried yeah. to, like, and, you know, and she said like, oh, like, oh, I, I don't like to be talked at when I read, you know, uh, I, I, you know, these ideas, they really didn't phase me. Uh, they, they didn't find them compelling or interesting. And, you know, I, and I said something like, oh, well, not everyone's as well read as you. Not everyone's as smart as you. And I think she thought I was being sarcastic. Uh, but I was being sincere. Yeah. You know, like, not everyone's a university professor. Uh, you know, these ideas, uh, you know, the standard for if an idea isn't important shouldn't be, like, if it phases the university professor. Because, again, you know, ideas should not only be for academia and academia alone. And I think we have a fundamental disagreement about, you know, what 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 books should be for and who they should be written for and like what they should be because uh you know i don't think they should be just playgrounds for the you know the, the conjugenti you know what i mean oh yeah no that's a a really good point um and and you know it's always been my sort of criticism of mfa is that it almost feels like its own genre of writing when you read the kind of best seller published writers who you then see got an mfa um it's it's a very sort of it feels very prepackaged a very like yeah. um you know a lot of them you know more recently and this is not uh you know uh, a lot of them more recently have you know are, are basically like women of color which is you know great but like it, it's it's like um it's very political it's like it's appealing to that uh npr type listener class as you said right. cogn cognigenti yeah yeah and i think you know like, because I, I did in my thesis, I wrote a little bit about Armenia because, you know, I've been to Armenia. Right. You know, I'm an Armenian diasporan. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, they they were very overt about the fact that, like, I should have written that. I should have written that book instead. There I you go. What I wrote. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, um, that's that's what they want you to write about. It's this. Yeah. It's, it's this. They want you to write. And it's it's good that you did write about that, because, of course, we should write about personal stuff, um, ethnicity, all of it. It's It's interesting stuff, yeah. but it's very oversold. Um, in the culture in general, and especially from that sort of cognigenti MFA world, it's all about um, they want you to write about, um, you know, your your background in a, in a demographic sense and trauma that has ensued from that and kind of poetically unpack. Yeah, that. I don't think I'm being unfair. Like, I think that's exactly what no, they want I don't think so. Yeah, I tried to do. To... <laughs> yeah. And I and I said and I said to him, I was like, uh. I feel like that's been written before. And he said something like, again, you know, the Proverbs, he was like, oh, like, I love you has been said a million times, uh, but if you say it in the right way, like, you know, it's like, yeah. Yeah, no, but it's like- Thanks for talking not... to me like, a, like I'm five years old. <laughs> oh, that's but awful. No, like, yeah. yeah, but no, like, I've been to Armenia, like, I think I'm just being honest about my experience. So like, I've been to Armenia and, you know, there's this whole, I don't know if you know about Artsakh, but it's like basically- not really. It's like that, yeah. basically like a Israel Palestine type situation, but it's oh, like Armenia, oh, Azerbaijan. Yes, yeah, so, okay, I do know about that. Yeah, I didn't know it was, yeah, yeah. And you know, I, <laughs> I've been, I've been like ten miles from the front, and I still like you know, and now I'm back here, and I I can't bring myself to care about it. You know, like I, can't, yeah. I just can't care yeah. about it. I care more about the internet. Yeah, you know, and let's let's exp let's think like I, I'm thinking about like I want to think about that. You know, like. I want to kind of be honest about that. I don't want to kind of like pretend I felt a certain way about going to Armenia because I didn't, you know what I mean? Yeah. No, I hear you. I, yeah. That's interesting. I mean, yeah, the, the, I do think creative writing, I think authentic writing, you know, it should be about the immediate, you know, you don't, you shouldn't have to reach for something that feels somehow noble. You just, you write about your life, you know, and that's, that's what good writing is. But I don't think that's what they tell you. That's not what they tell you at MFA programs. Evidently. Yeah, yeah. Everyone, I think if we're being honest, I think most people or a lot of people, significant amount of people, care more about the internet than like anything else. Yeah, and, you know, and uh, I want to, I want to kind of be honest about that. And I think, I think, I think we know that on some level, like some some conscious level, but we don't want to admit it, which is why we try so hard to say to 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 consume the stuff that that like really you know, pulls out all the stops to try to root us in like the real world, like the real world matters. Like I have like, you know, this is how I feel about, you know, this country. And, you know, I, this is my experience. Like the, the real world still matters. And, you know, I'm not saying it doesn't, but I feel like everyone kind of is disillusioned and uh, which is why we try so hard to pretend that we aren't, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Like you couldn't, you just couldn't write 
like you couldn't like the the world now doesn't lend itself to good storytelling. Like you couldn't write Moby Dick because they would find him in in you know in one day with no. You know, it's a really writer. it's a huge problem for writing. And people talk about a lot in screenwriting too because that's that there's a genre that's really supposed to still be rooted in cause and effect. And it's like, well, you'll just text the person. You know that how many it's, good great movies can you look at that that wouldn't work because of exactly. not even the internet but cell phones. That's tons of movies. Exactly. Or like Star Wars or yeah. Dune, they have like, they fight with swords. And, you yeah, know, like, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which like, I, you know, because that's cinematic, that's, you know, that's yeah. interesting. And of course, it's not how war works now. You you just press a button and you blow something up. You know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> yeah, no, no. Totally. Uh, so uh, I don't know if this encapsulates your thesis, but I really do think there is something to that, like that the nature of the story is changing not you know if someone wants to still write a great adventure story that takes place back in time uh more power to them but i i think there is kind of like like new new writing um like i don't know if you read like zero hp lovecraft or anything but like it's just like we i, I mean i've seen his tweets and I yeah think he's a you know, yeah yeah <laughs> Go ahead, but sorry. Just, just so he's an example, you know, and he he writes in he writes an established tradition himself. It's kind of Lovecraftian, Borgesian, shall we say? But yeah, Borges is actually an interesting talking point. Like, I mean, uh, things almost have to have that kind of postmodern element where you're kind of possibly dealing with polemics or 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 like like just not modular stories so much. I and mean, I don't know if my lingo's right here. You get what I mean? Like, I, th I think you're very right that the internet necessitates a different kind of storytelling because it's no longer about uh, X went to Y and this happened. And now it's more about right. just this ocean of information that we're in and how we navigate it. I think that's the story now more so. And there's different things you can do uh, if you're writing creatively uh, to bring that out. Like, um, again, not just trying, I'm not trying to pimp my own work here. It's just more I'm, I'm just honestly thinking about you know the, the the ways i've dealt with this like the the first story in the next you know self-published <laughs> book that i'm gonna put out um is just a series of emails and like that's the story right. and like stuff happens but it's that you get it through the the lens of of emails and people's changing emotional states and i feel like that's more the world we live in now right and i mean you know like i always say like like you remember harry potter like the goblet of fire where mm -hmm. he he's trying to figure out how to breathe underwater and he can't figure it out like he, he can't like he's researching and researching and he can't f figure it out yeah you know like there's nothing like that would never come up like i i am omniscient i know i i, I there's nothing i can't know you know i have it all in my pocket <laughs> you know what i mean yeah definitely and um you know i i think you know like if i we used to kind of give like in folklore the heroes used to be more powerful than that like we used to give our heroes great power like you know hercules is super strong and he's, you know, he's more powerful than everyone else. He's like someone to look up to. Where now, like, like, you know, I'm more powerful than, you know, I'm more powerful than the people in Lord of the Rings. Like, they have swords. I have a gun. Like, I could just shoot them, you know? Like, yeah. I'm more powerful than, like, all the folk heroes. You know, we, we used to give, like, folk heroes great power. Now we have to, like, take powers away. You yeah. Know what I mean? No, no, absolutely. Yeah, it's fascinating. It, it's a real issue and like it sounds like it should be a positive thing but i you know in your mind i mean i guess from a creative writing standpoint it creates problems as we said but like i guess yeah i did want to circle back to that like do you think it's good do you think the internet is good or bad that's too too broad of a question but I, like what is what is your are you more of a tech optimist or pessimist and or how how do you present that in the thesis would be the other version of that question mm. I haven't thought about it from that particular angle. I mean, I don't know. I'm I'm a pessimist in terms of uh, I'm not quite sure how much longer humanity is going to last. Yeah. And I'm really not trying to be like edgy when I say that. But like, no, yeah, like the Black Plague, like whenever that comes again, I don't think we're making it past that, whether it's like, you know, 500 years, 1000 years, it, that kind of that level of uh, I don't think we're making it past that. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Interesting. Like if COVID was the Black Plague, you know, I think I think I think we'd be extinct. Yeah, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. but uh, but the but the in terms of the internet, it kind of just you're kind of uh, more like, like it just is. You know what I mean? Like it's just the yeah, air I mean, we breathe. Uh, yeah, that's also I don't fair. Know. Yeah. Like I, I'm I, I'm I guess particularly like porn. I think is a bad is bad. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, 
yeah, yeah, I'm sorry, I really don't know. I no, can't really okay. answer your question. So. No, no worries. It's all right. Um, because it's I, I mean, I, I, I guess I would wax pessimistic about it, but, uh, but I don't know. I don't have like a super thought out answer for it either, honestly. And I think yeah, you're you bring up porn. I mean, I think there's a lot of bad things on the internet that kind of suck your energy up and then do nothing. Yeah, good with it. I think that that element of the internet is very bad. Uh, the element where it it takes your energy and it it takes something good which is your energy and, you know, perhaps your sexual energy and puts it toward nothing, you know, it, it depletes it, it depletes you. Um, but obviously uh, we're talking on the internet now, like I do think there's, there, there is, there is opportunity for connectivity. So there are, there are, um, you know, good things and bad things happening at the same time with it. I think overall, um, I think, I think over, I'll say this, I think overall we as a society, uh, here, here. That, that's. I guess that would be a. Kind of, this is a megalomaniacal man, armchair philosopher point to make. But we, as a society, I think, are really struggling to adjust to the internet. I'm sorry, I, I can't engage with you anymore. You're a me- megalomaniac. I'm gonna hang <laughs> up the phone. No. Yeah, no, yeah. I'm kidding. No, um, we're getting to that section of the conversation. But yeah, no, yeah. like it's, we're starting to adjust to it, and there's a lot to to write about there and explore. Right. I mean, yeah, and I think the proof is in the pudding of, of you know that it's having all these negative impacts. But I just think. Like, there's this idea that, like, oh, you know, if you're just more disciplined, if you just kind of make an effort to to turn your phone off, like, that you can kind of, uh, you know, you can uh, escape it in some way. But I just really think, like, our brains weren't built to, like, withstand the internet. You know what I mean? Like, they were we're fighting, yeah. a losing, we're fighting a losing battle. <laughs> Very much. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, no, and the whole, like, oh, log off, turn off your phone. I, yeah. okay, first of all, I do think that's still good advice, and I would encourage anyone listening who's, like, feeling overwhelmed to do exactly that, touch grass. But it was way easier to say that, like, 10 years ago. Like, you actually right. used to say, you know, if you're getting off a chat on Facebook or whatever, like, BRB. Like, you'd actually tell people when you were logging off. We don't do that anymore because we're always assumed to be online. Uh, and that happened within the past 10 years, I think. And it's this ins- – I mean, right. I, I, I mean- yeah. Yeah, I mean, I have this thing in my pocket that can really offer, it offers me all the like libidinal stimulation and all the intellectual stimulation and all the kind of connect, like sort of connections uh, and entertainment that I could ever need. Really, the only thing it doesn't do is is like, you know, pay my rent. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And my grocery bill. Um, and, you know, that's, that's, that's horrifying, you know. Uh, it's, yeah, it uh, is. Yeah. And I don't think, you know, like I can't, you really, I can't really have a job without the internet. Like, you know, I just, I can't, it's not yeah. an option to really not be plugged in. Yeah, um, you can't really have a job and you also can't, you definitely can't self-promote. Like, you know what I mean? Right. The, if, if the other option to, to having a job is like, oh, become a self-starter. Well, then you need the internet even more and to use it even more intensely. So it's. Yeah. And I know this has been said about porn before, but like, I think it's, you know, again, people need to be reminded more than they need to be instructed. But, um, like, you know, if you were, if, if, you know, if you were in the wild, you know, as some sort of ape man and you see like a fertile, like potential, like a fertile potential, like breeding partner, like that's like why you're alive. Like that is like, you might, might you might get one shot at that. So your brain is like, okay, like this is it. Like, this is like, we're going to flood you with like all the chemicals we have. You know what I yeah. mean? Like you need to take action. Like this is it. Like you need to take action right now. Yeah, exactly. Um, and now it spreads so thin. And now I can yeah. see that whenever I want. Like I can see it a yeah. million times a day. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. And, and and our brain doesn't know the difference. And we get flooded with so many chemicals that you know, like we we just become numb and we we can't enjoy. Like I can't enjoy. We can't enjoy anything else. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, no, I think it happens with porn. I think it happens to some people with like video games and even just entertainment. Um, you know, not that specific thing of of your you know your 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 survival reproductive instincts kicking in necessarily, but just generally like these th- you know there's a story. Uh, if I was smarter and <laughs> could cite names, I'd remember who wrote this. But some story that I read at some point in college, a real story, not a not fiction story, like about some someone. It, maybe it's in a Dickens novel. I don't remember. But like, there's a story about someone like a piece of newspaper. You know, in the 1800s or something, blew in front of them. And they immediately picked it up and started reading because they could only read so much like words you know what i mean like they had a very limited amount of stuff that they could read so if they see writing on the ground it's like i have to read this 
because it's right. information and it's interesting. And now it's like, we have to really tune out all this text and not just text, of course, but images and video and sound. Um, and it's this insane task of like cultivating the media we take in the media and, and you yeah. know, information. Um, and it's, a, I think it's a game of like, you know, knowing the stuff to, to look into and then also just like being able to totally tune other stuff out. If you don't have that, like you'll go insane, uh, especially yeah, as like a smarter person. Like if you actually like are intellectually engaged, it blows your brain up. Yeah. yeah I mean, it's, it's, it's such a profound prison to be in like surfeit of information is, is such, is so more, is, you know, so much more arresting than like lack of information, you know, it's yeah, just, yeah. We're, we're all just, we're all paralyzed. There's just, there's, <clears throat> you know, it's just trying to, it's like trying to drink from a tsunami, you know, we can't. Exactly. Yeah. I don't know. And like, we're almost the same age. So like we, I don't know about you, but like, I definitely like, we're not, I don't know if you identify as Gen Z or millennial. I, I definitely identify as like later millennial. And I do remember yeah, a 96. different world. Yeah. I'm 90, late 94, almost 95. So very close okay. to it. Um, like I do remember like listening to the radio and listening to new songs on the radio. Like I remember a world before the internet. Right. Short. So like, or like not having a, a phone, like having an iPhone. Oh, definitely. Yeah. 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 I had a flip phone till until college, like yeah. um, so. We remember a different world, but right. uh, but, but that's yeah, this but that's bad. you know that's gone. That's like we're the last ones to you know like my students. They're you know eighteen, nineteen, twenty. They don't remember a different world. Yeah, you know I mean? exactly. So you teach you you. I guess that would be standard MFA program you teach as well. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. I just teach like you know fiction writing one on one. Oh, cool. But yeah, like we have this we have this anchor where like you know our grandparents. And uh, you know, they they kind of represent like this 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 kind of anchor we have this tie to like this like older this this older world uh, where things that kind of made sense, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I'm just I'm worried about what's gonna happen. Uh, you know, we don't have that anymore. Like, what happens like when like the twenty year olds now when they're eighty and they're kind of you know like what's gonna happen? You know, like what's yeah? Gonna... No, I mean hopefully they'll be fine I, I do think that eventually we'll we'll adjust in some way but i hope that it, i hope that adjustment isn't the living in a pod drinking soylent and having no sexuality other than porn adjustment i hope it's i hope we can yeah. keep so uh, you know what i mean like i do think i mean as you said like who knows how much longer this thing is going to go on humanity that is like obviously there's a lot of right. because of that i do i tend to think at least in the shorter term like yeah it can definitely continue indefinitely but like is it are we are we entering into a new sort of dark age? You know, You're right? Um, uh, that's the that's the big risk. I mean, apocalypse is a big risk, but also, um, you know, like a new a new dark age. Is it is it a world worth living in? And I think that you know, people have been engaged. Every generation is engaged with that question: how to make the world continue to be a place worth living for your offspring. But I think for us, it's not um, like fighting Hitler. It's it's like dealing with the fucking internet <laughs> yeah nice. um, um yeah nice. i'm not yeah. sure i feel like we said it i feel like we've touched on most of it um yeah i don't um, know do we want to move on to like we can move on to cornell in a second okay. but any i will give you one 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 more um you know All spot right. here like anything else you want to say about your thesis or, or the program you're graduating pretty soon so the 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 the, the, the review notwithstanding like all, all's gonna be, all's gonna be well hopefully right and you're you'll uh yeah. <laughs> i, mean, I yeah. hope i mean inshallah yeah. you know i'm just trying to get a job you know <laughs> um, yeah right right, right. but yeah I, i'm definitely done with academia fair enough yeah uh, yeah <laughs> uh, yeah no after and i'll talk i'm gonna talk very personally about cornell and all that and you know after cornell i had thought about going to academia and i'm i still wonder if i should have because like my dad's a philosophy professor like it's kind of like an apple doesn't fall too far from the tree thing it's like very much my personality but hey i think even though i'm not earning a salary doing it i, I like doing podcasts more than academia yeah. because we can be uh free uh which exactly is nice. we'll talk more about that in a sec but um do you th and not to and no pressure on these questions and if you if you if i ask something where it's like i don't really have a good answer i can just cut it out but do you think you'll try and publish your thesis through any means like i mean maybe I mean, the simon and schusters of the world are a little i mean i never tried to publish them but like uh, you know a lot of people in our sphere obviously self-publish or, or or publish like terror house or like one of these smaller presses so i'm just curious if you have any designs on that or, or if you're just done with creative writing for now which is also fair 
I mean, yeah, I mean, my confidence is kind of shot a little bit, but yeah, I mean, I might just be like, I might just self publish and, and tell my followers, like, hey, you I know, think you should. I mean, you got a good here's following. my, yeah. here's my shitty, like, you know, here's my shitty thing. You can like read it for like a dollar. Like, I don't know, something like that. No, you, I think you should. And like, I, I mean, I'm, I'm trying, I'm probably going to self publish my next thing if you ever, I mean, I, Amazon's fine. There's different means to do it. But yeah, look, we can talk about Cornell in it in a second. Um, but yeah, no, I, I do think your followers would, you know, I, I would like to read it for sure. And, um, oh, that's, you know, I think it'd be worth getting out there. Like, obviously, the whole space we cultivate here is a lot of people who are quote unquote self-published or like with smaller um, publishing houses. So um, there's a lot of opportunity for that. And I think people w would really appreciate it. And it. You know, even if it isn't perfect, you know what I mean? Like you just get the work out there and it, it does, right. it does feel yeah. good. And, 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 and you yeah. know, if your confidence is shot now, like you get a, a better, even just like a, a modestly good response from other people, you'll see there's another audience for it. And yeah, yeah. no, I think, I think all will be well, but yeah, we let's uh, want to move on to Cornell, shall we? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so let's back up a step. Yeah, I was kind of gonna gloss on this during 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 like uh my opening monologue, which is not a monologue, but um long story short, Ara and I went to Cornell together. We went we attended undergraduate uh at the same time. Um I was class of 2017, you were class of 2018. So we overlapped pretty significantly. Um I remember seeing you on campus. I don't think you remember seeing me but no hard feelings there was a lot of people on that campus um, of note is not only did we go to Cornell at the same time but um we were both in and Aris talked about this on his podcast um we were both in cooperative houses we both lived in co-ops uh, I was in one I don't know if it's like doxy to like be saying the name of these places but I'm just gonna do it and we can trim it out later if either one of us is less than comfortable with it I was in a house called Von Krom which has since been renamed fun fact um, because the person who was named after was like part of the Nazi party or something. So now it's called Red Bud. Uh, well, but you were, I just, yeah. It, just, you know, if people aren't, aren't understanding what that is, it, it's like a frat, but it's co-ed, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot more like, you know, hippy dippy, you know, like y'all cook and clean for each other. And, you know, it's, it's, it's exactly. all about like cooperative, uh, living social justice, you know, all that kind of thing. Yeah, very much. Yeah. Um, yeah, thank you for unpacking that. I guess some people, you know, I think different universities do have co-ops, but a lot of them don't. It's kind of like a parallel to Greek life. Co-ed, um, you know, not yeah. officially social justice oriented in its mission, although Water Margin might have been. Water, Water Margin was, yeah. Water Margin was, but, Von Krom less so. Um, but we but, had, you know, in, yeah. instead of Rush, we had Mosey, you know, yeah. quote unquote. And yeah. we had like, instead <clears throat> of a Rush event, which, you know, I haven't been to one of those, but I assume they're just like parties. We had yeah. like, you know, we had show and tell or something, you know, like, yeah, yeah. The... I went through the exact same process and you, know, you mosey, there's like six or so different co-ops on Cornell's <laughs> campus. Um, Water Margin and, and, and Von Krom were both bit, what some of the bigger, I think Von Krom might've actually been the biggest, um, but or 660 was the biggest, uh, which I'll also, we'll also probably mention 660 later in this conversation, but yeah, basically suffice it to say it's a, it's a co-ed um, sort of hippy dippy, uh, not, not that everyone was a hippie either, by the way. There was like there's a lot of exchange students who did this and like, you know, kind of yeah. more punky type people. Um, but with definitely that um left to center, uh, shall we say, element. So that's another thing yeah. we had in common. Uh, my story about finding you, Ara, is that um so I I think we've been mutual followers, like not talking, but just like casual mutual followers since like 2020. I think I wrote like a a, a piece called like the, uh, the a piece called The Politics of Aesthetics revisited that maybe you read maybe you didn't i don't know but like you followed me around that time and i was just like cool and i followed you i thought it was interesting that you were a um mfa student but then fast forward to november of last year and i'm on facebook which I, I never go on facebook i don't use facebook and i saw your name come up and you're you know you go under your name on twitter as well um mm -hmm. and i saw your name come up as a as a someone with whom I had like 20 or 25 mutual friends. And I, I assumed I was going to click that like mutual friends link. And it was going to be uh, just like the normal set of like, cause I do have like sort of um, online political sphere friends on Facebook too. So I assumed it was going to be a slew of them, but actually it was 25 people from college. <clears throat> and then I went to your page and didn't necessarily recognize you at first. Cause you do look different than, um, than when I would have, um, seen you on campus you know, you've grown your hair out since then uh right. but I, I scrolled through a little bit i was like oh my god it was that guy uh and it was this <laughs> crazy thing it was definitely the first time my twitter 
sort of life has intersected not with my real life, but just like with that realm of connections ever. Um, and I thought, I mean, I thought it was very cool. And I reached out to you at that point, this was back in November and we first started talking. Um, I was also around the time I started listening to your podcast and you talk about um, water margin and some of your uh, very, uh, you know, formative, I guess, experiences there, which I won't make you rehash if you don't want, but I was very right. moved by it. I'll just say that. I mean, it was, you know, the story involving sexuality and girls. And um, specifically for me, I remember you left, you left water margin, you left your house and you went and slept on the bench of Sage Chapel. I which did is do the, that. Yeah, yeah. Which is the church, basically like the um, cross denominational chapel slash church worship space on Cornell's campus. And I, uh, I was like a practicing Catholic in college, not so much anymore, but um, so I, I knew I was just thought in my head, like, I know the wood of those benches. Like we have, the, not that I ever slept on them, but like, you know, I felt very uh, connected to what you, what you right. were saying. And I've had, again, I don't know if you want to rehash, you don't have to, but you know, that, that sense of like having, be, having a crush on someone and being awkward um, in my case, like I, you know, I was actually in a relationship. I, I don't want to necessarily get into all the details, but just, I know that, that sense of being in one of the, you know, these houses were very like sex positive and like just fine. But then like as a slightly more quiet or awkward person, like you get sort of alienated from that and it's uncomfortable. I could relate to it very much. Let's just leave it at that. Right. Yeah. I mean, I won't rehash that particular story, um, but because it's too complicated, but yeah, just in general, um, like I've, I've struggled my whole life with like, you know, really profound, like, uh, you know, anxiety and, uh, particularly just like social anxiety and, 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 you know, like people would, people will like say hello to me and, and I would just not say anything back and I would keep walking, you know, like, yeah. uh, like I was really that, you know, I was like, Oh, that kid's going to like shoot up the school. Like that was, <laughs> my, you know? yeah. Um, and yeah. And then, and then I went to Cornell and I was still, you know, obviously I'm, I'm, I've, I've been lucky enough to make some progress. Like I'm not quite that person anymore, but when I went to Cornell, I, I was still that person. And, um, you know, I, somehow I got to, to water margin because, you know, it's, it's, it's not totally like, it's like a lottery system, you know, it's, uh, yeah. it's, so I was just, I guess somehow I got in, and, <laughs> yeah. you know, these are people who, you know, it, it, it's at Cornell, you know, and it's like people from Westchester, like people who, you know, are, 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 are really, you know, have a lot of money. Like, I, you know, I, I'm not from that background at all. Right, yeah. Um, you know, people have a lot of money, like people, like really, like, like really cool, like people who have been in possession of themselves, you know, their whole lives, you know, like, yeah, no, that was like, my feeling about it too. And I'm also not yeah. quite from, from that background. Yeah. Like but people can, who are like, yeah, go on. Not just like one or two steps ahead of me, but like 10 steps ahead of me, you know, like I mean? on a social basis. I mean, you know, they're right. very, very outgoing types of people a lot of the time. Yeah. Um, um yeah. And, you know, it, it was just, it was, it was interesting because, you know, here's that kind of, here's that sort of uh, sphere. And then all of a sudden, like, thrown into that is like, you know, Bartleby, <laughs> the Scrivener, it yeah. was, which, which <laughs> is me, you know? And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Like, I, I just, I really kind of threw them all for a little, like, they, they really didn't know what to do with me. Um, <laughs> it's just kind of fun. It, looking back, it's funny, but at the time. Yeah. You know, it's kind of painful, probably. Yeah. Yeah. Um. And, and yeah, you know, and I, I apologize for how naive this sounds, but like it was my kind of first introduction to the idea that like if just because you're a liberal doesn't mean you're a good person. <laughs> you know yeah, I mean? no, 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 no. That's a totally valid. I mean, for me too, like I would say college was sort of a process of that. Um, again, not to pit my own work, but a, my book Dragon Day, which Dragon Day is a thing from Cornell is just kind of an... You know, I don't mention that in the book, but like anyone who with familiar to familiarity with Cornell would know that um, it was very much like tried to encapsulate, you know, my experience of that. I mean, not that specific thing of realizing that not just because you're liberal doesn't necessarily mean you're a good person, but like sort of to that tune. I mean, you you're told I think you actually talk, you are talking about this in your podcast as well. You're told college is supposed to be the best years of your life. Um, for me, like it really was good in, in a lot of ways, but like. I don't know, there was a kind of that edge of sadness or like awkwardness to it as well. Um, where it's like maybe this isn't totally for me or something. And yeah, I just always felt like the odd man out. So many memories of being like feeling like the only person 
at the college party, like who wasn't having a good time, like that whole right. aesthetic. Um, yeah. Yeah. And again, like, you know, uh, like just the things that would, things that would happen that pissed me out. Like, again, I'm sort of very recalcitrant by nature, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, uh, and of course I had a tremendous amount of anger because here are these people that could function so much better than I could, you know? Um, and, and they were doing things that I didn't, you know, they were kind of doing certain things that were kind of shitty, but like, I felt like I couldn't say, like, they were just so much better than me. You know, it's like, yeah, he's saying it would be like saying something to like, you know, judge Holden or something. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, from, uh, uh, yeah. So like, yeah. 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 But then, so, you know, like that, like so that band we're, we're gonna get into that band that we we both knew but like, right I, yeah. I knew those guys and you know like we had a game room at water margin mm -hmm. and and somewhere down the line that you know that game room where, that anyone could go into sort of became their like band practice room which no one else <laughs> could go into and uh you know yeah. like you know, that would have been fine. Like, you know, I go to, like, I like, you know, that's great that you have a band like that. Like, I would have approved that if it was put to a vote at the house meeting, but it would never was put to a vote at the house meeting. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um. Oh, interesting. Yeah. And they were do, and you know, they would kind of do things where like, you know, it would be like, oh, they were all hanging out. So they were going to like, like their particular time hanging out became like house pizza night and they would use the money of the, like the house budget to order pizza, like basically for themselves or, you know, yeah, they would like buy they were themselves. The, they were the cool kids. Yeah, or they yeah. would buy themselves like expensive for like that, you know, particularly one summer when I was living there, like that one girl, like I don't know if you remember, but like she oh, yeah. uh <laughs> <laughs> she kind of ordered like her her and her girlfriend, like she ordered like all, all like all this fancy food for like her and her girlfriend basically. Um yeah. with like with the house money, you know. Jeez. And um Yeah. And then I remember something, you know, something happened where like we had a party and someone you know, some drunk person, like, you know, they, they broke into the band practice room and they, and they sprayed the fire extinguisher on their, you know, equipment and they kind of messed up their equipment, which is obviously like, you know, I'd be pretty mad about that if I were yeah. them. But then uh, that, that one guy, uh, uh, I don't know if you remember, but he, uh, yeah, yeah. I do. he, uh, <laughs> he, he, he put something on Facebook, like, oh, uh, basically threat, like it was overt overtly like threatening this person. And, you know, and and everyone just kind of everyone kind of just was like oh ha 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 like because like everyone loved him you know he was so cool yeah. and you know i had to be the one at the house meeting to be like you know maybe we shouldn't like be threatening people you know what i mean <laughs> like uh, yeah and 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 of course the, and that's coming from like bartleby the scrivener that everyone hates you know and uh yeah. and, but I, I had to you know i had to do it you know i had to um anyway yeah no, i'm so worked up about it <laughs> no yeah gosh i mean okay so in, in defense i guess of von krom then i actually do think we might have been more authentically democratic than you guys because i i everything down to the my most most minute points was put to to a vote there and there was i think a little bit less of a hierarchy there in terms of who was cool and who was not so i'll say that yeah. in defense of the co-op i was in it was a little bigger it was a little like water margin like was one of the cooler co-ops no doubt uh them and cayuga lodge were like the really cool ones like a top think of it like a top tier right rat, basically um which is kind of funny if you're kind of more socially awkward but yeah there is like a more lottery based system so they'd help, probably help you get in not that you know not that uh, like you, you get what i'm saying i'm not saying you're not like, I get what you're cool, but you get what i like those are intensely like fucking hierarchical places i remember i mean i still remember like i mean we could we could really reminisce for a long time i don't know how interesting it would be to listeners i remember like mosey and Cayuga lodge and then like like they seemed to really like me at first but like it was just a weird and i i, I there were some cool people there but like it's just a weird vibe and definitely yeah water margin too um was was one of the ones with like a really cool set of people and what you're saying now uh confirms that perception um but yeah no um, i don't know if i won't say the name of the band because I, I i don't mind if people look this stuff up uh and like dox me not dox me like get me harassed but like people can like find this stuff about me if they want um but i don't necessarily want to make it super easy like you can you can look people can look this stuff up and i also i guess just for the, for the sake of the other people involved too but yeah there so i won't say the name of the band but yeah you mentioned this band your personal experience with them I actually have a funny memory related to them as well, which is that I used to write for the for Cornell's newspaper. 
Uh, I would cover culture. I would write music reviews. And I did. So um, the band was playing at this this co-op that was actually right next to Von Krom, right next to the co-op I lived in, uh, called 660, which was an even bigger, kind of more free-flowing, more hippie one. Um, and they played a show in the basement there. Uh, and I went in. I didn't even see the whole show. I was late. And I just, and I still stand by this, uh, whether or not some of the people in the band were douchebags. It was definitely like a really positive vibe. Like it felt like being at yeah. like uh, a velvet. I mean, yeah, you liked them too, basically. Yeah. Right? Music. And they were good. You yeah. know, they were, they, they were, were very, they were surprisingly yeah. good for just like a band of like, well, I shouldn't say surprisingly good. A lot of good bands come out of colleges, but like Vampire Weekend, for example. But like, so not shocking, but like, yes, they were very good. And there, there was, it was like, um, I, I thought like Velvet Underground a little bit. Like I made some pretty highfalutin comparisons in this article, and I was like, yeah. but 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 before I getting into the more negative element of it, like no, it really was a good show. I remember everyone was dancing, very yeah. positive vibe. I wrote a glowing review. This was when the band was new too, so I think it meant a lot to them initially um, that I wrote it, gave them good coverage. Um, but then two things happened. One of them you remembered. Uh, the other one, I, I probably no one remembers but me. Uh, I'll start with the 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 one that you remember. Um, basically, the my article revealed to the fire marshal that <laughs> 660 was uh right. was bringing was having these shows, which is like very strictly against fire code. So they got in big trouble. I don't think anyone was like cursing my name or anything because I don't, I think they all understood that I would have had no way of knowing that. But uh. That was one thing that happened because of that article. And then the other thing I remember, which ties a little bit into the political, more, more polemical stuff every time I remember, I remember this was 2016, like a couple of months before Trump's election. So it was like peak, um, you know, tense times in terms of like wokeness and all that. Uh, and I remember it's always almost weird because like the lead singer of that band was like, he wasn't even like white, but like still everyone was like, well, well, a they they were um, taking me to task for for being so gushing, which which I probably deserve. I'm still kind of embarrassed about that. But then they were also like, "Oh, for God's sake! Like, what? No, you you didn't deserve it." But anyway, go ahead. <laughs> well, thank you, I appreciate that. Um, but uh, no, but they were also like, um, "This white guy is writing about like this white band and citing like all these these white reference points like Iggy Pop and Velvet Underground. Like, we need to move past this." Um, which is not that remarkable of a thing for that to happen at that time. But I definitely remember get, this is the only time I ever at that age, it was the only time I ever gotten like dragged for writing yeah. something. Yeah. And I guess maybe we shouldn't say the names, but yeah, I, I, that, I, that guy, you know, the guy who was the lead singer, he was Mexican. I'm pretty sure he was. But yeah. Anyway. I, I think the person who, the, the idiot who was writing the comment just saw the picture and like, was like, Oh, he looks white. You know, it's one of those yeah. things. Yeah. But, it's Italian or something. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't share that because it's like I'm still, I'm not like still traumatized by it, that. It's like funny, but uh, yeah. but it really, I, I just share it mostly because it kind of encapsulates that time a little bit. I think like that you really could write something as innocent as like an excited review about like uh, a punkish band and like it would be interpreted politically, uh, which was yeah very much of that time. There's some other stuff with that band that uh, um, you know. Who's yeah. The basis. Yeah. He. Um. Well, I won't say anything that. Bad. Were you friends with him? I wasn't really friends with anyone, but you know, I, I, <laughs> I knew it. Yeah. 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 Anyway, I did want to share with you. Like, um, he. I'm not gonna say he stole my girlfriend. Didn't happen. But I Who was, was with. You probably know her too. Mm. Her new. Uh, maybe not. Maybe not. She was my year. Maybe I knew her like by sight, but uh, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. If you. Yeah. Anyway, I, I dated her for like three years like lost my virginity <laughs> which is kind of funny to yeah. say now but anyway um i dated her for like three years and like we broke up senior year and she'd been friends with for like a long time and they were in like poetry classes together and they basically ended up dating like right after we broke up and it was you know rough for me and when i say i can relate to your story about water margin it's because like yeah they i didn't i wasn't living right next door so i didn't hear it but like i knew she was just like having sex with him and all that like in the house where i still was and it was that's my my social trauma so to speak but yeah i, I mean uh, um it just kind of goes it, it shows that like you know there's no such thing as like you know if you have the right values, you like you can create this like little mini utopia. Like there's always going to be like people who like 
you know, make power plays and like, you know, that mm -hmm. if you're good looking or if you're charismatic, you're, you're just going to, you're naturally going to kind of attain a certain amount of power and authority, you know, you know what Definitely. I mean? Definitely. Yeah. Those, those co-ops are kind of uh, hierarchical in that way. And I, I don't have anything against, um, actually don't have anything against either, but yeah, that's definitely like, yeah. Was well, my, sorry, like, yeah. no, no, it's like five years ago now, but that, that was my, what I say, I can relate to your story. And if I can just ask, um, what, who was the girl at water margin that you were? Oh, uh, or you don't have to tell me. I'm just curious. No, I got to tell you. Um, huh? Maybe I didn't know her. I should probably recognize her by sight. Yeah. 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 But yeah, that anyway. was like my my first kiss. You know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was even worse. I was even no. I was gonna say I was even like more innocent than you. You know, like. I, yeah. I, yeah. Um, probably. Yeah. Gosh. Yeah. Jesus. No, anyway, it brings up yeah, it definitely brings back old feelings, but not in a, not in this to like think about this stuff, but not in a totally negative light for me. Like it's, it's formative stuff, you know, it's that way. Yeah. yeah maybe I, that'd be, I think you should consider leaving that in and maybe we, I don't know. Can you bleep names or something? I don't know. Yeah. You know what? I will. I will. I'm, I'm going right, to leave cool. it in. Yeah. And maybe, maybe trim it around the edges, but I, I don't know. I, I thought coming on here today because I can relate so much to some of the stuff that you talked about, about your college experience. I again, I did channel into my novel a little bit, which some of my listeners have read. Um, I, I wanted to get like way more personal today than I normally yeah. am on a podcast. I think it's like it's good stuff, and yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, what more to say about Cornell? I mean, you graduated one year after me. Thankfully, both of us missed missing any years because of COVID. Um, what uh? So you took like one year off and then went to Florida, basically. Uh, Not one year off, you know what I mean. But like, you, I don't know what you're doing this two years. You can talk about it. Yeah, long, two years, yeah. two years in between. Um, I really didn't. Well, one year I was just kind of working shitty jobs, and then the next year I, I kind of you know traveled. Like I went to Armenia, and uh, my dad was in the Peace Corps in Morocco, so you hmm. know I stayed with him for a little bit. Um, well, that's cool. Yeah, that's a good kind of bummed around. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's neat. I, I always, I didn't study abroad. I didn't do that. And sometimes I wish I had, I moved to Los Angeles, like almost right after college to work in the uh, entertainment industry. Mm -hmm. um, and I've been there ever since. I'm like, I have a long, again, I have a long-term girlfriend now. So, you know, things th th that, that's not like that other trauma I mentioned was, was like still ruining my life or anything. Um, but uh, so I'm kind of settled here, but I do sometimes wonder if like I should have, not that I should have, like we were all on our own path, but I do think it's a cool thing that people do like travel around more. I didn't do. Yeah. I mean, the grass is always great. Like, you know, I, cause I, I would like to not be living paycheck to paycheck. So I'm a little jealous of you. You know what yeah. I mean? <laughs> not that I'm uh, exactly swimming in it either, but yeah. <laughs> uh, so hopefully, you know, yeah. get a cool, I'm going to be, you know, 27 in, in the summer. So, you know, hopefully I can finally get like a, you know, a career going or something. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm sure. I mean, you're obviously, not not to not to put myself in some weird paternal position because <laughs> i'm barely old. but you know you're oh, obviously please, like, no i need you're I, obviously I, like I very it. you're obviously very smart you know you went to these institutions like and had whatever mixed experiences you had at them like you you have a lot to offer so i think you'll find you'll find your way um oh, thank you I'm, you know i don't know you that well but i'm confident in that uh, it's hard for all of us right now like just figuring out like what to do for work i think it's kind of a weird time but um but I think, you know, you'll, you'll find something. And, and I think you'll also um, keep, you know, putting, putting good material out there online, hopefully. Oh, thank um, you. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, be, and be paternal as you like, you know, I, I need a, you know. Pat on the back. I need, yeah. I need yeah. a daddy figure. Yeah. I mean, my dad's, <laughs> name, my dad's name is Matt actually. So. Oh, you know. damn. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you know, Hey, if anyone uh, is listening to this, you know, you should hire me. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Know. What kinds of things are you looking for? Just out of curiosity. I don't know. I mean, I'd like to, you know, like, f like I wrote for the Cornell Daily Sun too. And I, right, and I wrote yeah. like, you know, I just had like an op-ed, you know, uh, and I, like, obviously that's a pretty competitive, like everyone wants to just get paid to like write their opinions. Um, and maybe, yeah. maybe I am a megalomaniac if I think I deserve to, you know, I deserve that. But, um, yeah, well, I would definitely, I like, know. whether you're writing fiction or nonfiction, I, like, wherever you go and whatever you end up doing for money, like, just keep writing It would be yeah. my advice to anyone. I don't know. Because, like, I, I don't write for a living. Like, I write 
every day in the morning, fiction, nonfiction, right. whatever. And I podcast and that stuff kind of keeps me feeling like I'm still shining my light in the world a little bit, even as exactly. talks can sometimes be suffocating, but like, yeah, just keep at it. I think it's the, it's the main thing yeah. as everyone says, but right. I think that's, that's true. Um, yeah. And you're not just yeah. talking to me. Yeah. All the listeners, yeah. Uh, you know? Yeah. Well, um, it almost feels like we're wrapping up, but I actually, I wouldn't mind keeping going if you, if you still have time. Uh, there's a couple other touch points. I mean, yeah. You know, do we want to do like a part two or I don't know, we could, I can come back some other time or. We can do a t- part two if you want. I mean, I just wanted to, why well, do you have to go? Uh, Yeah. I mean, I, I, I don't know. I do have some other stuff to yeah. do, but. Yeah. Let's, um, um, let's wrap it up. I was just going to kind of comment that I do think um 2017 to or sorry 2013 to 2017 or 2014 to 2018 in your case was like definitely a very interesting time to go to college like during the yeah. rise of trump just kind of wanted to to briefly uh touch on that and then if you don't i'll ask one more question if you don't mind. oh yeah all right um and it, it's this is a little more personal too sure. in its way um but uh kind of what your your socio-political trajectory so to speak so obviously i don't think you necessarily identify strictly of the left or of the right maybe more so of the left even i don't even need you to put yourself on a label like that but but i what so when i first saw on your facebook you know you were basically a big bernie sanders supporter i think your banner yeah. on there is still you meeting bernie um but then it's interesting because you haven't really posted on facebook since 2020 a lot of us have kind of moved away from facebook but the last things you were posting were like benjamin braddock screenshots and um michael tracy screenshots so how would you kind of describe like your development of thought there like you just found your, you mentioned earlier which i thought was interesting that you kind of realized that liberals weren't necessarily good people and you yeah. kind of, it seems like you know you're willing to sort of rub shoulders with the dissident right or the populist right without being like a rightist you kind of i think there's kind of a more general dissident space that it seems like you're a part of just wanted to get your thoughts on that before we wrap yeah well i mean i thought i deleted my facebook i i, I didn't know <laughs> it was still, uh, like, sorry accessible. yeah but uh yeah i mean i i definitely i don't know i, I guess i think that like you know the, the popular thing to say is that you're um you know uh socially uh liberal and fiscally conservative yeah and uh really that makes no sense really i think the i think i'm like you know Fiscally, mm-hmm. I think I'm fiscally liberal and socially conservative. That, yeah, that yeah. Mean, yeah, 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 yeah. It's right. fiscally liberal and uh, fis- fiscal, fiscally left. Sense, you know what I mean? Like, right. um, yeah, yeah. Like, I, I really don't think there are any legitimate arguments to be made against, like, you know, uh, you know, uh, wealth uh, redistribution and uh, you know, uh, free healthcare and uh, free yeah. housing. But I support all that. But I, I, I do think there are some arguments to be made for things like, uh, you know. Um, institutions like yeah, co- marriage like, and this kind of yeah, family co- yeah. yeah right like fan like two two parent families like collective spirituality uh you know uh modesty uh chastity even uh you know um just you know robust sort of social norm like things like that i think you, that's a much easier argument to make than than arguing that you know poor people should uh you know starve <laughs> yeah <laughs> definitely definitely and no, it's um. I think you have a good head for um. Just from what I've seen, heard on your podcast, and seen on your Twitter for the kind of just the way that um things like and it's almost a tired talking point, but I'll I'll say it anyway. Um, like things like wokeness are used to sort of mask economic inequality, or like de- deflect the argument. Right. Um, you're definitely from that kind of generation of people who's moving away from that. And I guess to say, sort of in closing, like I'm glad that we have come across each other again. You know, we came across each other an undergrad um, to ships passing in the night, um, maybe with some stuff in common that we wouldn't have realized. Um, and now we've kind of re in this strange way that life works, you know, we found ourselves on this corner of Twitter, um, not and probably coming from very different, you know, initial political starting points, but nevertheless, kind of converging on this, yeah, this kind of dissident, disillusioned space that follows, you know, Trump and Bernie, and now we're in the, you know, Biden era. Um, it's kind of funny how people come back uh, together and how there's a lot that they have in common, both personally and politically, even if there's also things they don't have in common. And uh, I'm grateful for it. I'm glad we could do this podcast. And we, yeah, let's be happy to do a follow up um, to yeah. get some thoughts around for that. And let's definitely stay in touch. I'm curious about your thesis and all that, too. So. All right, yeah, thanks like, a lot for coming on. Yeah, 
yeah, likewise. I mean, just thanks for having me on. I, I enjoyed it. Um, glad to, you know, have a, a, you know, it's an internet relationship, but I, I think that, you know, can, it is a real relationship, quote unquote. Uh, you mm -hmm. know, I'm glad to be getting to know you. Uh, and yeah, yeah no. I, I liked a lot of what you said. And, uh, you know, again, like, I, I don't know if, I don't know how, you know, you want to, or, run your podcast but you know you can always you know come on again anytime if you want yeah yeah um, we'll we'll do it again um i'll, I'll yeah. kick some more thoughts around we can reminisce more or we can get more into like the meat of uh you know some of your thoughts on things and be even more All polemical right. so yeah so right. have a great uh rest of your day <laughs> yeah thanks you so too man for coming on i'm really excited yeah, yeah and let I'll... me know like when it's up and i'll you know i'll retweet it all you know but yeah all, all right. right thanks all right take care yeah thank you